Sinanko. Julian is um, the online guru. He is someone that I've we've done a couple of events together in the past, mm -hmm. but this is the first time he's hosted a workshop. I've heard wonderful things about him. He's flown all over the world to speak to prime ministers, um, FTSE 500 companies, and small businesses. So we're very happy to have him tonight. Good evening, ladies. Hello. Are your hands feeling fabulous? Yes. I'm really upset that my people are going to get pushed back this evening, but um, I've been promised by the gentleman at the back that I can come back. So, um, all right, so today's discussion is going to be around uh, this book that I wrote in 2010, 2010 Secrets for Social Media Marketing. Um, so, just a little bit of background I ran a digital, a digital agency in Shoreditch, which is now Tech City, um, for, for a few years with um, business partners of mine and kind of exited that uh, towards the end of 2010. But we got into social media really early. I mean, before the term social media was coined, um, we were doing campaigns and we were promoting stuff that we were doing across social media, across some very, very early social media platforms. So, um, so we feel that we kind of know quite well and we have you know, a bit of an opinion on it and so on. And, and the thrust behind writing the book was essentially because social media got to a point where everybody knew that they needed to do something about it, but no one was quite sure exactly what they should do about it, right? So there was lots of information, there was lots of stuff happening, um, but I felt that I could perhaps, you know, just lend my opinion and distill it down into kind of 10 bite-sized chunks. And it wasn't about how to set up on Facebook and how to set up on LinkedIn. All of that stuff is child's play. I'm sure we all know how to click a few buttons and fill in a profile, right? Um, but the underlying messages, well, I hope you do. But, um, <laughs> but the underlying messages, but the underlying messages and the underlying things that actually drive social media is what I thought was, was a bit more important. So that was really, uh, that's really going to be the kind of basis of, of the discussion today, why it actually works. So, um, very good, good start. So secret number one, how to build powerful customer relationships using social media. Now, um, can anybody tell me what the image of the background is about? What, what, what's happening there? Marriage, okay. The uh, ring is going onto a finger, so what, what happened before you get married? Yeah, it's a relationship. Yeah, that's good. And then the relationship, in between the relationship and getting married, what happens? Get engaged. Get engaged, right, okay. So, to you guys, okay, who's, who, who here is engaged or married? Okay, good, right. So you guys are, who's engaged? Just me. You're engaged, right? You're not married? Okay. All right, good, good. <laughs> so, what does engaged mean to you? When you were engaged, <laughs> what does that, that mean? Oh, just, right. just, just give me a key, just give me a key words. I'm just going to turn it into a relationship. <laughs> but what do you think engagement, being engaged means? If you just throw out a couple of key words, what do you think that, that means to you? Love. Love, okay, good. Um, what else does it mean? It's going to be a Okay, good. That's, um, <laughs> that's, that's good, yeah. <laughs> Okay, everyone else, throw out some keywords. When you're yeah, yeah, engaged, yeah, what is yeah, connection? Connection. Connection. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm looking for. Promise, commitment. But it's commitment, right? So, when you want to build a relationship with your customers or your prospects through social media, you need to engage with them. So, we all hear this thing, engage with your audience, right? It's not something you haven't heard. But engagement, what does that really mean? Yeah? Um, to me, engaging really means when you're engaging in a relationship, you're engaging with your customers, it means commitment. You have to commit to them. Yeah? But we don't really look at that. We just think engagement, okay, that just means have a bit of a conversation. It doesn't mean that. It means you need to commit to your customers. Um, and the way to build those powerful relationships is to keep that commitment going. Because if you think about the brands that you love and the websites that you go to to, you know, to be entertained or to be informed, yeah? they are committed to you because you keep going, because you like the content, you like what they're saying, you like their points of view, whatever it might be, yeah? You don't realize it, but in them actually putting out this stuff, they are showing the commitment to their customers and to their viewers or their readership or their, or their, or their clients, whatever it is, right? But they've made a decision to do that on a regular basis, yeah? And they get feedback from people, and that feedback allows them to work out the more, more effective ways on how to engage and how to commit. So what you need to think about in your own businesses, whether you set them up or you're about to set them up, is how can you, what is it you can do to commit to your customers? Because if you don't develop that relationship based on a commitment, then they're not going to stay with you, right? Um, they'll just think, okay, you're kind of here today, gone tomorrow, and there's, there's, nothing to, there's nothing for them to buy into, yeah? 
When you engage, when you, when you, as a customer, engage with a brand, you're buying into that brand. But you're buying into that brand because that brand has built up some kind of value, and that value that they're delivering is based on their commitment to you as a customer, whether it's through their products, whether it's through their services, whether it's through their content, whatever it is. So for all the businesses that you're trying to do, think about how and what you will do to commit, right? And that doesn't mean promising loads of things. We all know if you promise too much, right, you're never going to be able to follow up on any of them. Even if it's just one or two things that you can commit to on a regular basis, outside of your core offering. So whether you're selling a widget, you're selling um, information, whatever it is, that's your core proposition. But that's not why people are going to be coming to you. You think it is. You think because you're selling X or doing Y, that's why people are coming to you. That's, that's not the reason. They're coming to you because there's something about what you're doing that they like. That's why they're coming to you. There's something that has engaged them. There's something that's caused some kind of interest. That's the reason why they're coming to you. And that's the reason why more people come to you. And it's the reason why people will keep coming to you. So you've you, you got to think about what that is. So for example, for me, what I did very, very early on, we're talking about 10 years ago, was I started to share my knowledge about everything that I knew. I basically, I, I blogged, I wrote hundreds of blogs and articles, and I put them out across some of these very, very early social media platforms. Now people would say to me, why would you, why would you give away your, your, your knowledge? Why would you tell people about the things that you can do and why they can do it themselves? Why would you do that? And, and the reason for that is because, one, it, it builds credibility. It builds credibility for yourself. And two, people will only go so far with the things that you tell them to do, you know, because it's not such their core business. But what they want to do, what you're doing is you're putting them in a, a cycle of helping them to make a buying decision. Yeah? So people are only going to buy from you if they think that you're really good at something. The only way they'll think you're really good at something is if you can tell them or show them about what it is you're doing. So today what these guys are doing is quite clever. They are giving you and they give you an experience. Yeah, you're not paying for it, but they're giving you an experience based on the services that they're offering, the products that they're offering, this beautiful building that they've got, right? And with the hope that you'll come back, right? <laughs> but that's what it is, and I think it's quite clever because you know this is whole um, freemium model. So we have a premium model. Now there's a freemium model. The freemium model suggests you have to give stuff away so that people can actually understand and identify and connect with you. No longer are we getting away with just pushing out marketing messages. It doesn't, doesn't work because everyone's doing that. How are you supposed to differentiate between one salon and another salon? Because they'll be putting out the same messages, they'll be offering the same things. You won't be able to tell, right? But the Freeman model suggests, well actually, if I give something that's a little bit away for free, that acts almost as a marketing uh, strategy that allows people to really experience what I want my, my product or service, so that they can like me, know me, buy from me, refer me, and so on and so forth. Yeah?